I've been wanting to do a dedicated effect video for a while now. The problem is effect is really hard and there is just so, so much to this library. It's insane. I've been working with it for about a month now. I've built a decent amount of things with it, trying to get as many reps in as I can. I've been talking to a lot of the effect experts that I'm friends with, like Ethan Neiser, and every single day and every single time I work on it, I discover some new thing it can do. It can do logging, it can do pipes, it can do exit matching, it can do decorators, it can do layers, it can do weird compositional stuff, it can do HTTP requests, it can do AI stuff. It, they built literally everything into this library and it's awesome, but it also makes it really, really hard to talk about. So really what I wanted to do today is show you some of the effect code I've been working on, how I'm using this in my applications, and show you how I've solved a lot of the issues I've run into trying to put this into a real world application. If you've done anything with effect before, you almost certainly have seen the effect type, where you have an effect which has a success type, an error type, and the requirements type. Conceptually, this is not that bad. It's basically just a function which explicitly defines what it can return, what errors it can throw, and what dependencies it has. We won't talk too much about requirements right now. The main ones are success and error. And this makes sense. Once you figure out how to use effect.gen and the generators to basically run your effects, where really, again, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, the high level is basically just if you want to run an effect in a generator, you just yield star the effect. So we have this fetch transaction amount effect, which uh, returns a number, never throws an error, never has any dependencies. So if we do yield star of this, we will get a number out. In effect land, effects make a lot of sense, at least when you're working with more basic stuff. The problem is when you try and cross these over into a normal application like a Svelte app or a Next app, where the whole thing is not built in effect, you need to figure out how to cross that boundary. And crossing that boundary is tricky. And also figuring out how to chain stuff together like your database calls, your authentication calls, how you're gonna return a stream from an LLM or something like that. All these things can get pretty weird and complicated. And I wanna show you how I've been sort of solving that. I do want to pretty heavily caveat this video where I am not an expert on effect by any stretch of the imagination. I've been working with it for about a month. I've written a decent amount of it. I've talked to a lot of experts about it. I have not put any of this in production yet. I am still very much learning, but I do think I've discovered enough things that it is worth making this video. And of course, if you do know effect better than me, duh, make sure to let me know down below what I get wrong and I'll make sure to get that corrected and fixed in the future. I am very much learning here and none of this is dogma by any stretch of the imagination. One of the coolest parts of Effect is these services. If you watch my video with Ethan Neiser, where he went and rewrote a project I made with Effect, he used these very heavily, and there's a very good reason for that. These are a really good way to define the parts of your backend that you want to have like a quote unquote service for, like your database, your Redis, your authentication, the AI stuff, any external API calls you need to do. It's a really good way to put all that stuff together to define an explicit error for these things. Like here I have this database error to define the things that this service needs to have. In this case, this is my database service. I'm using Drizzle for my ORM. So here the service just has this get DB connection method, um, which is just an effect that returns either a connection or a database error if it fails to connect to the uh, Drizzle instance. And then down here, I am creating my DB service layer, which is basically just the implementation of it. Again, I'm not going too deep into how all this stuff actually works. I already have that video made with Ethan Neiser if you want to get a deeper look into how these things actually work. But what's really cool about this is how we can use this within the actual application. This is a Svelkit app. Svelte is my favorite framework. And I have this load function where we need to just get all the chats from the database. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what this project is. The, that is a topic for the future, depending on whatever the hell this turns into. It's pretty cool right now, but we're not there yet. In this load function, I need to go into my database query. I need to go ahead and grab all the chats from the database and then return them. And you'll see that the code for this is super simple. It's just const chats equals yield star db dot query dot get all chats. And then this returns all of the chats with the correct type. I return it and then I can run it here and return my uh, chats down to the UI. It just works like a normal load function. But what's interesting about this is you'll notice that this load effect has a dependency here of database service. It also has an explicit error here of database error and it has the return type. And this is one of the things that I found to be really, really cool about effect is how innately composable it is. Uh, just by virtue of doing this effect.gen and then yield starring this db.query.getAllChats, it implicitly knows 
all of this stuff. It knows about the database error. It knows about the database service. And this means that if I also wanted to do something with an auth service or with Redis, it would, exp it would just automatically figure out those dependencies I need. And then down here, when I'm creating my runnable, TypeScript will tell me which services I need to provide to it. If I tried to do const uh, test equals um, await effect dot run promise, uh, run promise of load effect, it's going to give me a type error because I'm not providing a DB service. It basically uses TypeScript to make sure that you're always providing the right things to your effects in a really, really nice way. And what I'm really happy with here is actually how I ended up implementing this. This is actually a pattern I stole from Theo. He did this pretty heavily in the pick thing code base where he would create this uh, DB object, which has all of the different queries and mutations we could do on our database in one place. Obviously we weren't using effect in that project. So you would just like do the drizzle logic in there. But I think this works really, really well with effect because what I'm doing here is my get all chats is creating an effect which will now depend on DB service because I'm yielding the DB service. I'm getting my database connection. And then down here, I'm doing my select from the database, just a normal drizzle statement. But what's really cool here is we are explicitly defining the errors. That's one of the things that effect will break in your brain is you will realize all of the different things that can throw in TypeScript. What effect basically forces or at least encourages you to do is explicitly handle all of your errors. So instead of just doing this the way I would before, where I would just have a function and get all chats where I would just do const chats equals await db dot select blah 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 and then return it that can throw if something goes wrong in the selects it's just going to randomly throw and I'll have no idea where that is or what's happening versus here it's very explicit that if this throws we're going to create a database error and that is now tied to this effect.gen so back over here we're getting that database error as one of the errors in this effect because all of this stuff composes together so nicely this feels like a really good way to design backends in a much more intelligent way that are actually resilient and fault tolerant because we're explicitly handling our errors. And I think one of the problems that I initially had with effect and a lot of people probably do is it's hard to instantly see the benefits of adding effect. If you put effect code next to normal TypeScript code, the effect code is going to be more verbose. There's going to be more overhead, more lines written to do the exact same thing. If we didn't do this with effects, this would be substantially shorter and potentially easier to understand because the benefits of this are very heavily in the error handling department, which is something that is often not really thought about. The happy path in TypeScript is really, really easy to take. It's really easy to just blindly await random things and just blindly call these things and have no idea what's going on in your application. Dylan Mulroy, who works at Vercel on domains, is a big effect guy and had a really good post a while back basically showing this in action where the TypeScript happy path can very easily blind you where before this was all these were all the errors they had for renewing a domain. It was either an API error, Stripe payment error or Stripe payment method error. Seems pretty simple, but when they actually went through and rewrote this in effect and explicitly handled all these errors, it turned into this. They very quickly realized that there are a ton of different ways that this can actually throw and you kind of, and you actually need to handle and care about all of these different errors when working in a real complex application. But that is a hard thing to see when you're just testing out a library. The benefit of this is not as instantly obvious as something like TRPC, where you can instantly see, oh, wow, instead of having to write these fetch requests by hand and manually type them, I can now just call an RPC function in my client component. This is very much something where you have to get deeper to really see the benefit of it. But the benefit of this is massive. And I do think that there are more benefits than just the error handling. The stuff I was showing earlier with the composability of knowing that it depends on the DB service and the fact that you can chain these effects together really nicely is a large benefit of using effect. Effect has so many different utilities and ways of doing things that uh, even this like simple client side code where I'm fetching the, where I'm calling the API chat save endpoint here, I'm using this pipe operator to basically go through and encrypt the JSON of the messages and then pass that with a flat map into this next effect function, which will then call this API route. And then at the end of this, we get the correct type out. You can chain and compose these things together in crazy, crazy ways. And that's not even getting into some of the other things this has, like the schemas. Here, what I'm doing is I'm basically defining the shape of my API endpoints to create an almost TRPC at home type thing, where I'm defining the input and the outputs JSON that needs to go up and down to this API endpoint, where when we are calling this api chat.save, we need to pass in a chat ID and our encrypted messages. 
And now the parsing and type checking on all of these JSON schemas is fully type safe and handled within effect in a really, really cool way. And now error handling is explicitly handled on schema encoding and schema decoding. The whole thing just fits together in such a nice way that is definitely harder to use. I mean, if we look at the uh, random bullshit I wrote here to do the API client helper, I might have gone a little too overboard on this. Uh, don't worry too much about the weird TypeScript bullshit I'm doing up here. Uh, the main thing down here is I'm just doing this call API route, which will go through and handle actually calling these API routes. I encode the input, I run the fetch request, I uh, decode the output, and all of this is just handled in a nice little type safe way. And when we look at this call API root function here, it's returning an effect that will get the correct output, and then it will have, again, explicit errors here. We'll either have a parse error or an unknown exception because there are some things in here where like, calling await res.txt apparently can throw. You would never think about that, but when you're doing stuff in effect land, you kind of now just have to think about these things and then handle them. And that's one thing you'll probably notice here. I'm not actually handling these in my app yet. You can get away with like not actually explicitly handling all these errors. Cause you'll notice here, like I'm just doing effect.run promise of this runnable. And even though this runnable can throw a database error, I'm not handling that error right now. It will just throw and then cause the load function to break. Cause right now I'm just working on prototyping the app out and getting everything working. I am still getting a lot of benefits out of effects. Like I was talking about before, Composing this together is really nice, and this does feel like a good way to write TypeScript backends, but it does mean that in the future, when I do need to go through and make this more resilient and actually explicitly handle all these errors, I have a happy path to do that because I know that this runnable can throw a database error instead of in the past, it would just randomly throw something and it would be hell to try and figure out how all this stuff actually works. I have been doing some testing on how I could actually do this. I was working on this in a different project, the stores and streams example thing I've been working on where I have this post effect, which will return a response or throw a cause.unknown exception or a parse error. And basically what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to explicitly handle these. I really haven't locked down exactly how I really want to do this. So I'm not really prescribing this as the best way to do it. Um, this is something that I need to do some more work and thinking on in the future. Uh, but for right now, to just give you an example of how you can do the error handling here, I have this exit.match where if we do this run promise exit, this result type will now be an exit. So it will exit with either a success of response or an error of cause.unknown exception or parse error. So down here, we just match the different cases. This is very FP pilled where we're basically doing pattern matching on this of on the success case, we just return the response on the failure case. We then handle the cause. So in this case, I'm going through, I'm grabbing my causes here. So I've got grabbing my causes here and then I'm going to iterate through them. I'm going to check, okay, is the cause a parse error? If it is, I want to return a 400 and send out, Hey, you did, you sent up the wrong data type that was on you. Or if there's an unknown exception deep within the system, that's probably on me. So I'm going to throw a 500 in Svelte. You can just call these error functions and then this will then throw the correct HTTP error. That's why I have this return new response down here. Cause this will never actually happen. I was talking to Ethan about this, some different ways we could do this. He wrote some crazy TypeScript code examples and that kind of turned into this. Again, it's not really fleshed out, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but the point here is that there are ways to explicitly handle these things, and there are also ways to do retrying and actually put together good coherent systems. I know that that was a lot. Effect is a weird library. Effect is a crazy library that is borderline a language that has so many different ways of handling all these things, and there is so much stuff to think about. Like I said, I really have not mastered this yet, and I mostly just wanted to show you kind of some of the benefits you get here with the composability and how everything is now explicit on your front end and back end, all the cool things you can do with it. Effect has a pretty steep learning curve that is very well documented. The documentation is okay. I definitely need some work and it is being improved. The stuff that they announced for Effect 4.0, where it's going to get much smaller and more lightweight. I believe they're redoing the docs to make it easier to get into this stuff. It's it's hard to get into Effect, but hopefully this shows some of the benefits you can get out of it because it's hard to see initially why it's worth adopting something as crazy and complex as this. But once you really get into it and really see how it works and it clicks for you, it's a really cool library. And I think it's probably the best way to write TypeScript backends at this point. It gives you the benefits of a quote unquote real language while still getting the flexibility and power of TypeScript. So yeah, if you enjoyed this insane rant of me going through a bunch of effects stuff, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have much better videos in the future going over deeper examples on how this stuff really works. And yeah, until next time, go try out effects. It's definitely worth your time.